Communicating our ideas effectively can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. As designers and engineers, our work revolves around creating, modifying and producing products that represent real-world objects. These come to life primarily in 3D and are usually communicated in 2D. These products will often need additional information in the form of logos, text and serial numbers. This text may be stamped into a sheet metal product, etched using laser or acid etched, or embossed in a moulded plastic product. Creoparametric gives you the ability to work confidently with the text in your designs, and over the next few minutes we will look at some useful workflows, from getting the basics in place, adding further text fonts to your library, and some techniques which allow you to confidently apply words and figures to different geometric surfaces. So, let's start with step one. Text in Creo can be treated the same as any other sketched entity. To add text, first specify the datum or surface and select the text icon here. Now to start applying the text, we effectively draw a cursor to the left hand side of where we would like the input to begin. Sketch a line from bottom to top to specify the initial height of the text. This automatically brings up this dialog box. Let's look at some of the options we have here. At the top here, in the first area, we can enter whatever text we require. The text itself simultaneously appears on the screen in the default font, which here we can see is currently font 3D. Don't worry about the size at the moment, this can be adjusted later. To the right of the text input box, we can see a button which opens up the text symbol box with all the GD and T or geometric dimensioning and tolerancing options you could need. For example, chamfer, profile of a surface, parallelism, etc. Below here we can select the required font. This takes its information from your installed fonts folder in the Creo Parametric installation directory. We'll have a look at that in a while and see how easy it is to add further non-default fonts for particular projects or customers. Underneath here we have the alignment. This adjusts the placement of the cursor itself right to left. This is particularly useful when centralising text on a surface. Here, for example, I'm using the construction line to ensure that the text stays at the centre, irrespective of the size. The vertical alignment works in the same way. This is called leading. Again, using the construction line ensures that the placement of the text stays consistent. The aspect ratio control elongates and squeezes the text itself. This could be useful if space is tight. However, do be aware that the letters or numbers are distorted. The slant angle makes the text italic, either to the left or to the right, and the spacing adjusts the space between each letter, while keeping the format of the letter itself consistent. This is called tracking. Here you can also place your text along a curve. The curve itself needs to exist prior to the text being done. It's a useful tool though. For example, here on this dial you can see that the numbers follow the circle, and on here are spaced equally on the surface. Kerning is used to properly space letters in certain situations, with custom letter spacing. An example here shows that with the word away. Without the kerning, the letters spread out, with the W starting at the end of the A. Kerning places the letters slightly closer to each other, giving a more pleasing effect. To create an embossed or debossed feature, you can simply treat the text as you would do any other extrude. Either raise the extrude the required offset upwards to emboss, and in the opposite direction to deboss, ensuring that you remember to remove material. Rounds and chamfers can be added if needed to the convex or concave faces. One thing to note here is that not all fonts will work. If the font is simply a line or has a low stroke weight, it will not extrude effectively. You'll need to choose a font with a heavier stroke weight for this. Also, when applying text to a sheet metal part, be aware that if you're debossing through the flat pattern, you'll need a stencil font of one type or another, so the letters stay complete. Otherwise, the hole falls out. In some cases, it might be that you need a font that's not already installed on your machine. One of our customers called me about this a few weeks ago, which actually prompted this video. They were working on behalf of a customer who needed their choice of font which wasn't already installed. It's a straightforward process to add fonts that Creo can use. There are a couple of things to check first though. Creo works best with true type fonts. You can see the TTF at the end of a font file. 
This format was originally developed by Apple in the 1980s and was later taken on by Microsoft as their preferred format too. Fonts can be downloaded from plenty of sites online. There are many options of style, weight, etc. One thing to be aware of is the licensing. Many are freely available for commercial use, but do check first. Most font designers will have their name attached to the download and can be contacted if you have any questions regarding their use. Let's look at this process. My customers asked me to use the Railway font to put some debossed text on the surface of one of their components. By default, my machine doesn't have it installed in Windows. I'm going to go to Google Fonts where I search for the Railway font family. I've got two options here, the standard font and the dotted one. I've been asked to use the 600 semi bold. Here it is. I use this button to download it to my machine. And to install it into Creo's directory, I go here. And I simply copy the font file to this folder. I need to restart Creo if I'm currently working, but now when I look in my fonts as I use text, the Railway font is available. Creo gives designers a great range of tools and features to allow you to capture your design intent right first time. Text can add clarity and style to your models and assemblies and shows clearly on your drawings too. If you'd like to find out more, get in touch with us here at Concurrent Engineering.